Really, the whole show has been about numbers. How come that was not the first thing they thought of? Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural episode 11 of season 7, Adventures in Babysitting. I guess let's just get the very obvious thing out of the way. I don't know how the brothers didn't think that coordinates were the first thing to do with those numbers. They spent three weeks looking at this. And when I was re-watching this episode, I was like, okay, it, it can't be coordinates like they they must have thought of this already they had to have done this already and then when they go to uh jack sparrow's uh first mate and he talks about like oh you know could have been other numbers like maybe he didn't finish all the whole sequence i'm like oh okay well entered in coordinates and in fact didn't need the extra numbers all the numbers we had were there I'm like okay hang on you were trying to write this smart and then you just said, yeah, we're just going to go with coordinates. The very thing the show based itself on in the entirety of the first season. Granted, it's not a full comparison, but it is a random ass field. But you would have thought, hey, maybe you should just check it out. It does lead into a bigger thing, obviously. But I just feel that this aspect of the story writing was so bizarre. Okay, well, well actually, we're not going to make it that simple. But you know what? It's actually too complicated to try anything else. So we are going to make it that simple. The rest of the story focuses on on these two monster ladies, uh, I don't know, not succubuses, but they're capturing different people. They capture a hunter at the beginning who has a kid, and Sam goes and finds this kid because he wants to kind of, you know, make up for what's going on with Bobby, whereas Dean is just once again putting himself in the asshole pit of self loathery and everything. Sam goes to figure out what happened to this kid's dad, meets the kid, kid's interesting-ish, and then he gets captured by these things, so Dean goes and finds the, the girl, and when they go and encounter the monsters, ah, I, I feel like definitely there is a self-reflection going on with Dean seeing that this girl has the ability to get out of this before it even starts. That comes up later on in the episode too. There is a little bit of this kind of backwards uh, sort of reflection on the boys and it is a little bit of development which Granted, that's something that I was complaining about for this season is that a lot of the filler episodes have very poor development and this one's a little bit better, but we already went through the whole trauma and very unceremonious resolution of Sam and Dean making up for killing Jewel from Firefly. I find this one's not really full committed, but it's also not half committed either. It's not poorly done, it's just not fully executed, but I can't fault it on that. I still think it's an okay job. And then the mo fight with the monsters is kind of interesting, except for the girl's acting is... It's funny because they make a comment about it, about a bad actress, but when she want, runs over to her dad, Dad, oh no, and just... She'd be great as a voice actress if... I don't know, she's never come back in this show. But she just couldn't do any kind of facial emotion. And I can't warrant her on that because I can't either. I have a very boring facial expressive face. But when you're in acting, that's kind of the deal, so I don't know, I thought it was a little odd that she did that. Overall, I know I'm harping on the episode, but it's not a badly put together episode, aside from the really stupid shit with the, with the coordinates at the beginning. I thought that was incredibly silly. But it does build up a little bit more into the whole mystery of what's going on with the Leviathans. It does touch on a little bit of Bobby's death. If not so much as you would have thought. It is the beginning though of the what do we got on dick? Absolutely butt kiss. And then let's do a filler episode. Now it's the latter half of this season that I remember being the, the worst bit. Which is kind of hard to say because we've already had a pretty lackluster beginning of the season. But let's see where this goes. Anyways, in the end I'm going to be a bit generous. But I'm still going to give this episode a 4 out of 7. It did exactly what it needed to do. It was a decent filler episode. It touched upon the story, it touched upon the brothers' uh, strife, it introduced an element of self-reflection about their own family, it does end with Dean kind of admitting to himself, at the very least, hiding his own emotional breakdown once again. My god, how many times can this guy just have an emotional breakdown in one fucking season? So, those are my thoughts about this episode, but let's see what you guys had to say. Adventures in Babysitting is a mixed bag for me. I love it takes three weeks after Bobby's death for Sam and Dean to start talking to each other. I love that the monster is a Hindu mythology and a vampire adjacent, opposed to vampires they normally hunt. Chrissy is basically what Claire was in Supernatural and would have been a fine addition to the Wayward Sisters. 
I love how Frank and Dean cut their own hands, proving they're not Leviathans. While one group with the gripe with the episode is that Frank giving Dean advice to fake it till you make it, even though Dean is forcing himself to smile through the tears and driving the Impala is one of the most well acted scenes that I feel like gets overlooked. One of the reasons I enjoy season seven is because it continues the Leviathan story as a threat, while it is also a monster of the week episode. Yeah, I can see that. Like I said, that's why I didn't like entirely fault it, but I still don't get the, the coordinate thing. Like I, I just thought that was the first thing I thought of. I remember when I was watching it back when it was airing. I enjoyed this mid-season opener as a decent standalone monster episode with some main story bits. But to be honest, I only remember when I only remember this when I got back to season seven. It's following much stronger episode and definitely not as memorable. Thanks for the crappy tip. It was cool to see more sincere, empathetic side to Frank. Not the sarcasm or snark, but he gave Dean advice, showed concern. Plus, we saw a glimmer into his deeper character trauma. Yep, that was a good bit. I love this show, but there was definitely a reminder of the inescapable presence of grief, both for the, ep the story and at times in real life. I've never sh been sure how to answer that one day at time, I guess, but it's hopeful watching them as a family from that tragedy. It was ironic and enjoyable watching Sam channel a little bit of soulless Sam to go with the monsters and defeating him. Yeah, that actually, uh, that's, again, like, there's these all these little bits that you guys are pointing out. It was why I was like, this episode's got issues, but it's not bad. It's still put together decently. The father, the actor playing the father is really good here, and he'll be back in season 12 as Lily Sunder playing a dickbag angel. Also, I just saw a much younger version of him in the X-Files Season 3, The Walk. Highly recommend. It's kind of sad that this hopeful ending for Chrissy is ruined in Season 8. She comes back, but her father is dead. What? Ah, goddammit! <laughs> Adventures in Babysitting. This episode is good for me. I like Frank's interaction with Dean. I really like the character Chrissy. She totally reminds me of Claire. The sucks that she never reappears on the show after season 8. I would have loved to see more of her. I think the actress has appeared on shows like Arrow and Teen Wolf. The actor playing Chrissy's father also appeared in the latter Supernatural season. I was glad that Dean told Chrissy's father to quit hunting for the sake of his daughter because Chris, he's right, Chrissy's just a child and still deserves a normal life. Got a last one here. The only aspect I enjoyed about this episode was Frank and Dean's scene, especially when Frank talks about his wife and kids and found them gutted. Aside from that, it's a dull episode. However, fun fact, the hunter in this episode, the one that has a daughter, the actor returns in the latter dab season. He plays an angel. And Is that the one where I remember liking the idea of it because you were kind of in the middle, like you didn't know whether to trust the the girl who was possibly having hallucinations, and then the angels, but then it turned out the angels were just dick bags, like they couldn't keep that moral gravity. I'm a person who very much likes stories who have moral gray tones, so when they give that idea and then they just completely side to one area, it, it disappoints me quite a bit. Admittedly, it is a hard uh, writing aspect to pull off. One of my favorite examples. Um, is uh, Sicario. That's one of my favorite ones uh, for a morally gray story. All right, guys, so we got number 12 coming up, time after time. So give me your guys' thoughts about that in the comments below, and uh, we'll read those off in the next review. Till then, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're more, subscribe. I am getting close to the end of uh, my reviews, uh, of watching my movies for the end of the year. I have watched almost all the ones that I've wanted to see. So I'm probably getting ready to do my top worst and best movies of the year. I actually did have enough to kind of make a list. So anyways, that's all for me, guys. See you guys next time.